starting a new series today. Um, it's time that we get into shape. And I know that's the pot calling the pot, the pot calling the kettle black, right? Because I am definitely not in very good shape. But at least all your clothes are still fitting you. No, I've got a whole pile of them <laughs> that have went to James. And the rest are just laying in the room when Charlie's like, I don't know what to pack you because there's nothing here. And I don't know whether I just keep getting bigger or the clothes keep getting smaller. They straight. They straight. Okay. So I went to Walmart yesterday. First time in Walmart in quite some time. I've only been there probably two times in the past three or four months because I just don't go anywhere. And I bought a shirt. This one. Don't wash it and dry it. It will shrink. I thought I'd put it on display. <clears throat> this is the, the 3X that Walmart sells. I knew I was in trouble when I started to put it over the top of my head and it felt, you know how sometimes things just feel snug and you know that it's not going to fit right? So I took it and I started to put it over my head and I, I'm like, this is not my usual looseness that I like. I like loose, big, you know, that I, if I need to get my weapon out, I don't have to fight with a tight shirt or anything like that. I can just, you know, and so they have, I don't know if it's every place, but Walmart has shrunk their sizes or I've gotten bigger. No, they did change their sizes. Like in women's clothes, no lie, they changed the size 28 to an 8 just to make you feel better. A, tw a 28 to an 8? Just to make you feel better. No lie. Okay. But so they are. 28 to 8, so let's see, that's 25 points. <laughs> so this is a this is a 3, so 25 plus, this is a regular size 28XL. <laughs> <laughs> I like the line of thinking, it's good. <laughs> but in all honesty, we're, we're all in poor shape, aren't we? Not about, now, if Tracy was here, I would have an argument, and she's not here this morning because, you know, I, I, don't, know, I don't know why she's not here, but <laughs> the argument would be, well, not all of us are in bad shape, and because she is one of those health nut gurus, and she's always exercising, you know, and I could make the argument, Tracy, if you're watching, I could make the argument that you're underweight, so therefore, you're still not, um, you're still not in good shape. Uh, <laughs> and then I would get the inevitable four-hour discussion about that. <laughs> we love you, Tracy. <laughs> uh, but it, it, it is, is really time. Now, um, March has done a great job um, getting herself into shape. March, you have come so far. I'm so proud of you. Um, you look amazing, by the way. Um, and, you know, March set out to get herself right and I, I hats off to you I wish I wish I could do that and I don't know if we and I'm still praying about this I don't know if we need to do something as a church for physical health to get us all to be healthy people or just concentrate on the spiritual side but I, I think probably it, it all comes as one package doesn't it yeah. if you feel good about yourself you have more energy to study the Word of God, to share with people, to not be so grouchy and grumpy. And, um, and so we, you know, we might, as I continue to pray through this, not, not, not this week, not next week, because we're gone next week. Sermons are done. They're on the videos. You guys are going to have a right service. It's probably going to be better than me in person. So you don't want, don't, don't hang at home just because the preacher's not here. Because the preacher is here. He's on the screens. And he knows whether you're going to be naughty or nice. So <laughs> I know the last time I left, there was like four people here. I'm like, wait a minute. That's, no, that's not fair. That doesn't, that doesn't work right. So um, uh, maybe, in, maybe in three weeks, we'll kick in the whole uh, physical exercise thing and run some kind of competition with that. Money talks, right? Well, kind of like the biggest loser. Yeah! Uh-huh. Yeah. 
You got <laughs> so Sterling's gonna go gain weight so he can win. <laughs>
where we fail you. That you would continue to forgive us. Lord, we, uh, I want to I wanna ask you to set me aside this morning, and I do this every Sunday, but it's so important, Lord, that it's not my thoughts and my words, but yours. In Jesus' name. So we see this story, and this is just an amazing story. And we came to the disciples, you saw a great multitude around them, and the scribes were there. Now, who were the scribes? Anybody don't know who the scribes were? Well, I haven't done a very good job, have I? The scribes were those people that wrote legal documents. All right, because not everybody knew how to write, a lot of them knew how to read, and so the scribes wrote legal documents. They also translated the scriptures for them um, from, from, um, the old, from Hebrew to Greek to Aramaic. They would, read, they would write them out, and they would also make copies of scriptures so that people had them. They didn't have a computer, they didn't have a copy machine. They didn't have, not even a, not even a bird that lived with a hammer and a chisel like Fred Winstone had that could make a copy. They didn't have any of that. So what they had was they had scribes and the scribe would write everything out. And so the copies of the Bible that they would make, if there was one mistake in that, then, then the, uh, uh, the scribes would be scribes no more. And a lot of times they would be either have something amputated or they would be uh, ex executed for their mistakes. Their job was so important that they could not make not one mistake, especially when they were copying or making copies of the scripture. So you know the whole the whole idea of well I you know I, I, I started I said this to this person here and this person told somebody else and this person told somebody else and this person told somebody else got all the way down the road and then it's completely different at the end that's not how it happened with the scriptures all right we have exactly what we're supposed to have with the scriptures and we know that they're true and we can uh, have complete faith in their authenticity and that they are exactly the living word of God. So the disciples are here and the scribes are disputing with them and they're having this big discussion about, um, about this, this uh, uh, person that is demon possessed. And immediately when they saw him, all the people were greatly amazed and ran to him. So, so the crowd is around, and the disciples are there, and all the crowds talking to the disciples. They kind of, it, it's kind of like they're they're getting on to them. You know, they're giving them the business for not being able to cast this uh, this demon out. And then all of a sudden, Jesus walks in, and it's like uh, it, it's like uh, you know when a superstar walks up to a crowd. You know, and I, you know, I, I don't know, I, I guess we could use Michael Jordan. He is really recognizable. Most people would recognize Michael Jordan if they saw him in a crowd. And I, I knew I was going to get somebody that said, no, they wouldn't. Thank you, Sterling. You didn't let me down. Oh. <laughs> so, so the crowd would recognize Michael Jordan. Everybody would start talking about him and maybe trying to get his autograph and up to him. And that's kind of the thing that's happening here with Jesus. He is so recognized as being the healer, the teacher, the rabbi, that, that the crowds usher to him, rush to him, and, um, and just make him, uh, make him out to be the, the hero of the group, so to speak. And, uh, and Jesus didn't have none of that. He, he's got kind of a sharp tone to his voice here. And he's like, what are you discussing with them? What are you talking to my disciples about? Something, something's, I, I, it's kind of the tone, I'm going to, look, I'm going to, I'm going to put up for my people. I'm going to, I've got their backs. I'm going to, I'm going to stand up for them. And I want to know what in the world is going on here. And one in the crowd answered and said, Teacher, I brought you my son who has a mute spirit. 
and whoever seizes and and whenever it seizes him, it throws him down. So he tells him, "Hey, I, you know, I brought my son to the disciples, to your group, and I need I need this taken care of, and I, I just want to see if you can if you can do anything about this." And we see the convulsions that happens, and and the body's all contorted and foaming from the mouth and. Today we would call this a seizure. And what would we do? We'd go to the doctor, go to the hospital, they'd give some medicine, and the medicine would, would subdue the person to the point where they can almost not function, or maybe, you know, I, I, I'm not a medical doctor, I, I don't know about all that stuff. But that's exactly what we would do. We would not consider that a seizure would be caused by an evil spirit, would we? Why not? Because we don't believe in evil spirits. Because we don't believe in evil spirits. Okay, that's one example. That's one reason. Why not? Anybody else? Well, because people believe in science. People believe in science, exactly. Yeah, but whether that's right or wrong, <laughs> in today's day and age, they believe in, they believe in the science. Trust the science is what we've heard. Um, what, what else? What other, what other reasons? Why wouldn't, we, why wouldn't we say that somebody having a seizure has, a, has an evil spirit? Some people don't believe it's possible to be possessed by a spirit. Not possible to be possessed, okay. And some of us don't want to get locked up that way. Okay. <laughs> Put it into a funny farm, yep. yeah. Some people are not believers. A lot of it think about that they don't believe in that and they don't believe what Jesus did and everything. And through all that, that we don't believe is controlled by evil spirits because they don't have a spiritual. They don't believe in the spirit world with God. Or they don't believe in the spirit world at all. Right. Okay? That's Jesus good. Jesus isn't around to cast it out. So you got to Jesus is not out. around to cast it out. Yeah. That's, that's true. Um, Jesus isn't around. Not in the well, physical not, form. Not in the physical, <laughs> physical, not in the physical right. form. Right? That he was there. What about it's not socially acceptable to say that somebody has a demon? Amen. What if what if you what if you were to come up onto somebody that's having a seizure? You're in Walmart, okay? Walmart's oh, it's always Walmart because that's where <laughs> everything happens. And you're in Walmart. Somebody's having a seizure. They're they're on the floor. They're having a seizure, and and you walk up and oh, they're demon possessed. <laughs> Y'all are laughing right now, right? That's what every time. Yeah, you're right. Focuses it on does, that. doesn't it? Yep, every comment focuses on that. So we're all saying the exact same thing. It is not socially acceptable today. Which means that we are spiritually unfit as a generation, as a nation. Because we are, pastors aren't educating you well enough to let you know that yes, evil spirits still exist. And yes, people are still possessed by evil spirits. Ooh, preachers fell off his rocker. Deaf, dumb, and stupid. It's true, though. The problem that we have is we can't identify who's possessed by an evil spirit and who just has maybe epilepsy. Or some other some other illness that causes them to convulse like that. And why can't we identify? Because we are spiritually weak. Because we don't understand how to identify those things. A lot of times we don't spend enough time in the Bible. We, we don't, and even if we do spend time in the Bible, we read this story, and we just kind of skip, oh, that's nice. Oh, how sweet. Jesus, Jesus did a miracle. Oh, that's so nice. You know, same as we read the, you know, the story of the feeding of the five thousand, or feeding of the four thousand, or the or the calming of the seas. We read it, and it doesn't affect us, does it? 
We're like, oh, that's so sweet. What a wonderful story. Praise Jesus that you can do that, but I don't believe you can do it in my life. And we just kind of blow it off. Mm. I do the same thing with exercise videos. <laughs> what? <laughs> Watch them. You just take the dust off? <laughs> yes. I blow the dust off the cover. I look. Oh, my goodness. That's an 80s workout suit. <laughs> and, you know, I might even go as far as to stick it in the VCR. Thank you to anybody on that one. It would have to be the VCR for PA. Stick it in the VCR. Come to our house. No, you come to your house. Mom and Dad had two VCRs. Awesome. <laughs> so I stick it in the VCR and watch a little bit of it, and I might, I might kind of, you know, kick back and. And I, how many of you have done that? You're clicking through the TV channels and you see a workout program and you just sit there and watch it for a minute. Oh, yeah. yeah, exactly, right? And you think, you think, you know what? I always go right out and get something to eat because that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> yes! I don't have to get up though. I got, I got a bag of snacks sitting by my chair, so 2.0 bag, bag of snacks. <laughs> Is, is getting into shape and, and trying to encourage other people to get in sleep. Oh, that's so nice. And click. <laughs> we do the exact same thing with the Bible. Oh, that's such a nice story. Oh, Jesus is just great. Flip the page. Or slide if you got a tablet like I did. You slide to the next page. We are so freaking out of shape, aren't we? Physically, mentally, spiritually, we, we need to pull ourselves together. And we see here, uh, he answered him, uh, let's go back, and wherever it seized him, it throws him down, he foams at the mouth, gnashes his teeth, becomes rigid, so I spoke to your disciples, and that they should cast him out, but they could not. So the disciples couldn't do it. The disciples weren't in good enough shape to be able to take care of this problem. Uh-oh. Sounds like the rest of us. It does, doesn't it? <laughs> yes. And he answered him and said, Oh, faithless generation. I think that we're still the faithless generation, aren't we? Oh, that's such a nice story. And before Jesus says, oh, faithless generation, we flip the page. <laughs> before we get the point, we flip the page. Before, before we get chewed on by the Messiah, we flip the page. God, this is Jesus yelling at all of us that we are faithless. <coughs> And he's like, how long shall I be with you? How long am I going to be here to hold your hand? How long am I going to be here to do this work for you? How long shall I bear with you? How long shall I, shall I take care? How long do I have to nurture you? And he says, all right, bring him to me. And they brought him to him, and when he saw him immediately, the spirit convulsed him. The spirit knew who Jesus was, didn't he? The spirit identified right away, oh no, I'm in trouble. And it reminds me of Tiffany's phone. Um, <laughs> I went up, went up to Tiffany the other day at the, at the cafe, and I said, Tiffany, I need to talk to you. And her phone, her text messages goes, oh. <laughs> and so I was like, Tiffany, I need to talk to you. Oh no! <laughs> and that was just perfect timing. And so, so here, we, here we are. The, the evil spirit's like, oh no! It's, it's Jesus! Oh, and, and what am I going to do? I'm going to convulse this boy and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make him go crazy. And it didn't have anything to do with the boy. And Jesus turned to the father of the son. How long has he been like this? How long has this been happening? And he said, from childhood. 
And often, so it makes us wonder how old, how old the person was, huh? Uh, and often he has thrown him both into the fire and into the water to destroy him. So the evil spirit wants to kill the boy. He's been trying to kill the boy. But if you can do anything, catch that. This man, this father is talking to Jesus. He brought his child to be healed, right? And the, and, the, and the disciples couldn't do it. They weren't in good enough shape to do it. And this guy's not having enough faith either because he says if. Exactly. If. Exactly. But you know what? If, if we'd have... If we'd have missed, if we'd have flipped the page earlier where we have a tendency to do, we missed this. Okay? And this is important, but if you can do anything, like, oh, your disciples can't do anything, I don't know if you can do anything either, but if you can, obviously he doesn't believe who he's talking to. Okay, he's a teacher, he called him teacher, which also means rabbi, it's just, just, you know, it's just like somebody... he's asking Jesus to prove it. Yeah, 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 he's asking Jesus to prove it. Have compassion on us, and that's what that means. Have compassion on us and help us. Prove it. If you can do something, prove it. And Jesus said to him, and he puts it right back on him, doesn't he? If you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. If you believe, that I can do everything if you believe in me. If you believe I can do everything. Mm. Immediately, the child cried out and said, immediately the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. Lord, I believe in you. Help me to believe. Now help me to believe that you can do all things. That you can do everything. Help my unbelief. <coughs> and when Jesus saw that the people, and when Jesus saw that the people came running, and he rebuked the unclean spirit, saying to it, Death and dumb spirit, I command you, come out of him and enter him no more. Then the spirit cried out, convulsed him greatly, and came out of him, and became one as dead. So Nanny said, he is dead. <coughs> so the spirit finally killed the boy. And all of the people are, oh no. Now what do we do? The boy's dead. Nice job, Jesus. You know, at least at least we're still alive with your with the efforts of your disciples. But now with your efforts, he's dead. And I'm sure Jesus is kind of grinning inside because he knows what everybody's thinking. He knows what's going through their heads. And he reached down and he grabs the boy's hand, and immediately the boy comes back to life and stands with him. And the disciples ask. They get away. Away from the crowd, the disciples asked, Why couldn't we cast it out? So he said to them, This kind can come out by nothing but prayer. Some versions of uh, some some scriptures, some some versions omit the word fasting. In some, in some translations, the word fasting isn't there. On uh, some of our early manuscripts, the earliest manuscripts, the word fasting isn't there. So it would have been um, added for clarification by the scribes um, in later, tra in later uh, translations. So we can, we, can, we can just simply look at prayer. This kind can come out by nothing but prayer. So here's our point to help us get into shape today. Prayer. Why couldn't the disciples cast out the evil spirit? They didn't pray enough. If you want to get into spiritual shape, start to pray. 
And I, you know, I, I've been kind of harping on this forever and a day, haven't I? But the reason I harp on it is because if you're anything like me, you lack, you lack prayer time. You know, I, I, I kind of ca carry on a conversation with God all, all the time. I'm, I'm constantly talking to him, and I'm sure he's annoyed at that. But that's not exactly what we're talking about here. We're talking about the type of prayer time that Jesus took, where he got away from the crowd, off by himself, on his knees, and prayed to his Father. That's the kind of prayer that we're talking about here. The, the, uh, the solitude and the honest prayer of, of, a, of a prayer life that's, that's set aside from the rest of our lives. It's kind of like a, you know, we call it a prayer closet. And uh, what's, that, what's that movie? Everybody likes War that movie. Room. Huh? War Room. War Room. War Room. I'm, not a Christian, I'm not a Christian movie guy. As a matter of fact, I hate Christian movies. I think they're cheesy. But that one was... <laughs> I'm, I'm getting yelled at back there. That one, that one was good. She's got, she's got a closet that she made into her prayer closet. And she goes in there and she's a warrior. She puts on her armor. She grabs her Bible. And she prays. Completely separate from everything else in her life. She's not thinking about her sewing. She's not thinking about her family. She's not thinking about her car. She's not thinking about retirement. She's not thinking about cooking, baking cookies for the, for the grandkids. She's praying. And when she's praying, she's praying for you, and she's praying for you, and she's praying for you, and she's praying for you. And she's got this whole list where she goes down and prays for everybody. That's what we're talking about. That's how we need to get in shape. It's hard work. It's kind of like sticking that video in the, in the machine and then actually doing the exercises. You can't, just, you can't just build the closet. You can't just clean the closet out. You've got to actually take time to use the closet. We've got to be healthy. We've got to be spiritually healthy. And it begins with a healthy prayer life. Take time. And we won't have to say, hey, Jesus, why wasn't I effective? You realize that's what the disciples asked, right? Jesus, why weren't we effective? Jesus said, you weren't prayed up. Get prayed up. You'll be effective. You'll see your whole world change in your eyes. Does that also mean that they didn't believe enough? That's not what Jesus says. Okay. <clears throat> well, it sounds like they didn't prepare for the exam. They, yes, they weren't, they weren't prepared because they weren't prayed up. Yes. Okay. Exactly. I like that. They weren't prepared for the exam. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, test, the test in life, yeah. Yeah. No. No, absolutely. Let's pray. Father God, again, we, oh, your scripture is just amazing. There are lessons in there that, that we, can, we can learn over and over again. And each time we open the scripture, we get a different lesson. And we learn, we learn a little bit more about ourselves and a little bit more about you. Lord, just thank you for this morning. Thank you so much for, uh, for bringing us together as a church, Lord. <coughs> I pray that, that our numbers grow, that, that more are being touched. And I, I pray that uh, I pray that those that don't know you will come to the saving knowledge of your grace. Help us through this week now. Please watch over myself and Charlene and the kids as we travel. But Lord. More than watching over us for safe travels, I pray that the sermon that I preach on Friday to all those unbelievers will, will be effective. <coughs> that there will be somebody where the light comes on and they accept you as Savior. Lord, let me be effective. 
Watch over us this week now. Lord, bring us back again next week as your church, as your followers, as people of the way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.